I'm going to publish a series of devlogs of building out a Web3 startup. I feel like I need air quotes around both of those terms. Uh, using all sorts of fun tech like Angular, NX, NGRX, Ethereum, MetaMask, CouchDB, and more. So even if you're not into all this Web3 shenanigans, there is still plenty here for you. I'm going to treat this like a serious application intended to scale, and I'm hoping that there'll be some good lessons there. So this is the first of these videos, and in this one, I am primarily going to talk to you about the idea, but we'll also take a look at the basic setup and proof of concept so far. I use the term startup loosely here. This is really more of an experiment to see if I can build something useful or interesting that would fall somewhere in the zone of what people generally consider to be Web3. The main goal here is learning and sharing that with everyone watching this series. And the difference between this and my normal videos is that I will be treating this as an app with the intent to be launched, not just a demo for a tutorial. And I will most likely open source everything at some point. So what exactly Web3 is isn't well defined, and I think the definition extends beyond just this. But let's just keep it simple and say that it refers to applications that use a blockchain in some way. So that might include distributed apps or dApps that have their backends built entirely on a blockchain with smart contracts. But it would also include more traditional looking apps that require a blockchain for some smaller aspect of their functionality. The key part for me here is that the usage of the blockchain actually delivers value that could not have been delivered without a blockchain, or at least that using a blockchain is the easiest way to do that. And specifically, I'm interested in the mechanics that a blockchain could provide to an application that isn't a financial application. <gasps> Do I hear the sound of butting in? It's gotta be little Lisa Simpson, Springfield's answer to a question no one asked. Okay, so let's jump right into the idea. And then we can talk about why it is interesting or at least interesting to me. And I've drawn you this terrible picture to help explain things. So the basic idea is that this is going to be a note taking application called Ethernotes. And the main idea is that you will just use your Ethereum address through MetaMask to create and read your notes. There won't be any account required. And the basic process will go like this in the front end, which is going to be an Angular app. You will just sort of use it like a normal note taking application, create your notes. And when those notes are synced, what's going to happen is I'm going to take all of the notes and JSON stringify them. And then I'm going to use MetaMask to encrypt that data using the public key for your Ethereum address. I will then make a call to a cloud function or a server or something like that. And what I'm going to do is check that your Ethereum address exists in the Ethereum name service. Now, if you are unaware of what the Ethereum name service is, it basically allows you to purchase a name like a domain name and then point that to a specific Ethereum address. So an Ethereum address is very long and hard to type out, but I've purchased an ENS name, joshmaroney.eth, and that can point to whatever Ethereum address I want. Now I'm going to circle back in a second and explain why this step is necessary, but first I'll go through the rest of the process. So we take that encrypted data and then we are going to upload that to a CouchDB database. It doesn't necessarily have to be CouchDB, but there are some properties here that I like. And then a new document will be created with the user's public key or their Ethereum address as the ID. And I'll probably concatenate that with some kind of document ID as well. And then all of the encrypted data will be stored in the document. And a key part of this is that this CouchDB database will be public. That means that everybody will be able to see the encrypted data for every other user. They'll be able to associate a public key with some encrypted data. But importantly, they won't be able to read that data because it is encrypted. And the reason that I'm making the database public is that I'm essentially substituting this for storing data on the blockchain itself. So at least at the moment, storing data on the blockchain, especially on Ethereum, is extremely expensive, even for small amounts of data. So if you wanted to create a note taking application and store all that data in the blockchain, it is going to be prohibitively expensive. And there would be some benefits to doing that, but I think I can get pretty much all of those benefits by just having this public CouchDB database instead. Because like the blockchain, it will still be accessible to everyone. Everyone can read it. 
and anyone could even take their own copy of this database. And CouchDB does have some nice properties like its ability to sync to another database to essentially create a duplicate of itself. Okay, so now let's move on to the important questions. Does this need the blockchain and does it provide value not offered by alternatives? So with my current thinking, there are three things here that make blockchain appealing, only one of which uh, I see is actually being strictly required. Using asymmetric encryption in this way to store private user data in a public database has always been possible, but the existence of Web3 and tools like MetaMask make it much more realistic to use for the user. MetaMask essentially just provides us with an easy way for the user to encrypt and decrypt the data without really needing to know what's going on. It's just a button press. And the important part here is that I'm not actually encrypting this on my own server. The data never gets sent to me specifically. The data is encrypted before it ever leaves the user's computer. Another way the blockchain could be used here is in the form of smart contracts uh, that would provide a convenient way to monetize this service and offer upgrades, for example, more data storage without needing to use a third party payment processor. But still, this isn't strictly required and I don't think it's the most interesting thing about this. The one thing here that actually does fully rely on the blockchain is this section here where we're calling the Ethereum name service. So if you can think of an alternative to this, feel free to discuss it in the comments. So the problem we have with our ENS here is that we are storing data in a database with just a public key. I don't know anything about the user. I can't distinguish any user from any other user. So the problem is that any user could create an infinite amount of public keys. But I will be providing a limited amount of storage because this CouchDB database will be a database that, that I own and I'm paying for. So let's say if I were to limit people to one gigabyte of data just to make the database manageable, if someone wanted to attack this service, they could just create an infinite amount of public keys and just continually fill up that one gigabyte of data until the database is too big for me to manage. So the benefit of the Ethereum name service here, which does require the blockchain, is that it allows me to associate a cost with a public key. So this means that someone can't just constantly create new public keys and spam the database because they would need to pay for a new Ethereum name service name or they would need to update the data for that name, which would incur a cost. And so it would become impractical for them to spam attack the database or at least it would be extremely expensive. So the key reason that this application requires a blockchain is to associate a cost with a public key. Okay, so this might be just an interesting experiment with tech, but does this actually provide value to the user? So personally, I fall into the category of person who thinks it would just be cool to be able to log in with MetaMask using my Ethereum address and nothing else to store notes, no account required. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who think that is dumb, but there are probably a lot of people who would want to do that. But I think where the real value comes from is that I, as the creator of this service, have no ultimate control over your data. As long as someone wants to keep the service alive and that person could be you, your notes will just be tied to your Ethereum address forever and anyone can build whatever kind of functionality they want on top of that that you can use. The database with all the data is public and available to anybody. So if I'm doing a poor job of maintaining the app or my features just suck, anyone can come along and offer a better alternative using the same data set. And it's cheap for users to investigate the alternatives. They don't need to port their data over. They just connect their Ethereum address to the new service and everything will be there already. There are a lot of technical considerations I haven't worked through yet, and that will be the point of this series of videos. I know a decent amount about encryption, but I am by no means an expert. So as far as I know, storing encrypted data publicly in this way doesn't really pose any security threat, apart from the fact that someone would be able to see how much data you're storing, but they wouldn't know the contents of that data. But since I'm not an encryption expert, there could be a flaw here that I'm missing. So, so if you can think of something that I'm missing here, do feel free to leave a comment. So all I have so far is a proof of concept that I can use MetaMask to encrypt and decrypt notes as I expect. And I will go through the code that I'm using to achieve this in another video, but for now, let's just take a look at it working. 
So I've just set up this homepage that is going to use my encryption service to encrypt and decrypt data. And it's just doing that on the pages ng on init. So just to quickly show you that if we look at the homepage, you can see we're calling this test encrypt function. We're using a message called please encrypt me. Then we call our encrypt method and we log out the result. And then we call the decrypt method and log out the result again. So the idea is that we start with our message. Then we want to see that it's encrypted. And then we want to pass that encrypted data through to this method and see that it can successfully be unencrypted. So if I refresh the application now, you can see the please encrypt me message being logged out. And then MetaMask is going to get me to confirm that I want to allow access to my encryption public key. So I'm going to provide that. And you can see here now that the encrypted message is being logged out. You can see the actual ciphertext for that. And then this is being converted into a hexadecimal format, which I think is required for uh, usage with MetaMask. And then MetaMask is now asking us to decrypt that message. So again, I'll allow that by clicking decrypt. And now we have our original message back that says, please encrypt me. So as I mentioned, I will create another devlog that goes over how this works in more detail and I'll create more devlogs for anything interesting that comes up as I build this. And I'm also going to heavily focus on how to use the tech that I'm using, like using NX, NGRX, creating tests with Jest, uh, using Cypress most likely. So there's going to be a lot of stuff here. So future videos will be heavier on the technical details, but let's leave it there for now. Uh, I invite you to participate along the way with this. Uh, I'd love to hear any thoughts or ideas people have even if it is that you think something is incorrect or you don't get it or you just don't like it, I do want to hear about it because one of the main ideas of this series is trying to investigate what is valuable about using a blockchain. I would just ask that we try to keep it friendly in the comments. So of course, if you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.